shadows of the sanctuary. Every evening, as the sun dipped below the horizon, I found myself drawn to the old church at the edge of town. It was a solitary place, surrounded by overgrown weeds and crumbling gravestones, but there was something about its weathered facade that called to me. I couldn't explain the compulsion that drove me there night after night, a nagging sense of duty that tugged at the edges of my consciousness. All I knew was that I had to go, had to seek solace within those hallowed walls, no matter the cost. As I stepped into the dimly lit sanctuary, a sense of calm washed over me, the weight of the world lifting from my shoulders with each passing moment. The pews were empty, the air heavy with the scent of incense and old wood, but I felt as if I were not alone. I knelt before the altar, bowing my head in silent prayer as I sought guidance from a higher power. But as the minutes stretched into hours, I couldn't shake the feeling that something was amiss, that there was a darkness lurking just beyond the sanctuary's walls. Still, I pushed the thought from my mind, focusing instead on the comforting rhythm of my own breath. But when I finally rose to leave, the shadows seemed to loom closer, the air thick with an oppressive weight. I glanced back at the altar, a sense of unease gnawing at the edges of my consciousness. Something was wrong, I realized, something that I couldn't quite put into words. But as I made my way out of the church and into the cool night air, I couldn't shake the feeling that my nightly visits had only just begun to unravel the mysteries hidden within its ancient walls. As the days passed, my nightly visits to the church became more frequent, the compulsion to seek solace within its crumbling walls growing stronger with each passing hour. But with each visit, I couldn't shake the feeling that something was off, that the church held secrets far darker than I could have ever imagined. It started with small things, a flickering candle, a whisper in the darkness, but soon, the signs of something sinister became impossible to ignore. Shadows danced along the walls, their movements fluid and unnatural, as if guided by some unseen force. I tried to convince myself that it was all in my head, that the stress of my daily life was playing tricks on my mind. But deep down, I knew the truth, there was something wrong with the church, something that defied rational explanation. One night, as I knelt before the altar in silent prayer, I saw it, a figure lurking in the shadows, its eyes glowing with a red light. I froze, my heart pounding in my chest as I stared into the darkness, unable to tear my gaze away. Who are you? I whispered, my voice barely more than a hoarse whisper. The figure said nothing, its form flickering like a candle in the wind. But as I reached out to touch it, my hand passed through empty air, leaving me grasping at nothing but shadows. With a sinking feeling in my gut, I stumbled back, my mind reeling with fear and confusion. Who, or what, had I just encountered? And what did it want from me? Haunted by the encounter with the shadowy figure, I couldn't shake the feeling of unease that hung in the air like a thick fog. Every night, as I made my way to the church, I felt its presence lurking just beyond the edge of my vision, watching, waiting. But try as I might, I couldn't stay away. The pull of the church was too strong, its mysteries too tantalizing to resist. And so, night after night, I returned, my heart heavy with fear and anticipation. As I stepped into the dimly lit sanctuary, I felt the weight of the shadows pressing down on me, suffocating me with their oppressive presence. The air was thick with the scent of decay, the once hallowed walls now stained with the darkness that lurked within. And then, as I knelt before the altar, I saw it, the truth that had been hidden from me all along. The church was not the sanctuary I had believed it to be but a crumbling ruin, its walls crumbling and its pews empty of life. I stumbled back in horror, my mind reeling with disbelief. How could this be? How could I have been so blind to the truth that lay hidden beneath the surface? But as I looked around me, I realized that the church was not the only thing that had changed. The town itself was now nothing but a ghost town, its streets deserted and its buildings crumbling into dust. And then, as I stared into the darkness, I saw it, the shadowy figure from my nightmares, its eyes glowing with a malevolent light. It beckoned to me, its voice a whispered echo in the silence. With a sinking feeling in my gut, I realized the truth, I had been drawn to this place for a reason, chosen to bear witness to the darkness that lurked within. But as I stood on the threshold of the abyss, I knew that there was no turning back. The shadows had claimed me as their own, and now, I was destined to wander their depths for all eternity. 
Story 2. The Forbidden Game. The old mining town of Hollowbrook had always held a mysterious allure for me, its abandoned streets whispering tales of a forgotten past. But it wasn't until the screams started echoing from the depths of the abandoned mine that the true horror of the town began to reveal itself. As the sun dipped below the horizon, casting long shadows across the deserted streets, my heart raced with a mixture of fear and curiosity at the unearthly cries that pierced the night. Unable to resist the pull of the unknown, I found myself drawn to the source of the screams, my footsteps echoing in the empty streets as I made my way towards the entrance of the mine. The air was thick with the stench of decay as I approached the mine, a chill running down my spine at the thought of what lay within. But despite the sense of foreboding that hung in the air like a shroud, I pressed on, my curiosity outweighing my fear. I watched as a group of teenagers placed a Ouija board on the ground, their fingers hovering over the planchette as they called out into the darkness. Is there anyone there? They whispered. For a moment, there was only silence, broken only by the distant sound of dripping water. But then, as if in response to their call, the planchette began to move, gliding across the board with an otherworldly grace. I watched in awe as the board spelled out a series of letters, forming words that shook me to the core. Help us, it spelled out, over and over again, its message clear and chilling. But before I could react, a deafening roar echoed from the depths of the mine, sending me scrambling to my feet in terror. With a final glance at the Ouija board, I fled into the night, the screams of the lost miners echoing in my ears. The echoes of the screams lingered in my mind long after I fled from the mine, haunting my dreams with their chilling resonance. Despite my fear, I couldn't shake the feeling that there was more to the mystery of Hollowbrook than met the eye. Determined to uncover the truth, I returned to the town the next day, my heart pounding with a mixture of trepidation and excitement. As I walked through the deserted streets, I couldn't shake the feeling of being watched, the sense of unease growing with each passing moment. As I approached the mine entrance, I saw that it had been cordoned off by police tape, a group of officers gathered around the entrance, their faces grim with determination. I hesitated for a moment, unsure of whether to approach them, but something compelled me forward. With a pounding heart, I approached the nearest officer, my voice trembling as I asked, what happened here? The officer turned to me, his eyes dark with exhaustion. We're not sure, he said, his voice barely above a whisper. There have been reports of strange occurrences in the mine, screams, voices, things moving in the darkness. We're investigating, but we don't have any answers yet. As he spoke, I felt the hairs on the back of my neck standing on end. There was something deeply unsettling about the mine, something that defied rational explanation. And then, one night, as I lay in bed, a voice whispered in my ear, a voice that filled me with a sense of dread. You're getting too close, it hissed, its words echoing in the darkness. Leave this place, before it's too late. Despite the warnings that echoed in my mind, I couldn't shake the feeling that there was more to the mystery of Hollowbrook than I had uncovered. With a sense of determination bordering on obsession, I returned to the mine, my heart pounding in my chest as I ventured into the darkness once more. As I descended deeper into the mine, the air grew thick with the scent of decay, the darkness pressing in on me from all sides. But I pressed on, my mind consumed by the need to uncover the truth. With each step, the shadows seemed to grow darker, the silence broken only by the sound of my own heartbeat echoing in the cavernous depths. And then, as if in response to my presence, the mine came alive with a chorus of screams, a cacophony of anguish. With a sense of dread gnawing at the edges of my consciousness, I pressed on, determined to reach the heart of the mine and uncover the source of the screams that haunted my dreams. But as I reached the deepest chamber of the mine, what I found chilled me to the bone. The walls were lined with the bodies of the lost miners, their faces frozen in silent screams of agony, their eyes staring out into the darkness with a haunting intensity. And then, as I looked closer, I saw something that made my blood run cold. The bodies were not dead, but undead, their skin pale and clammy, their eyes white and layered. With a cry of horror, I turned to flee, but it was too late. The miners were upon me, their hands reaching out with a cold, clammy grasp that dragged me down into the depths of despair. And as their screams echoed in my ears, I knew that I was lost, trapped in the darkness of the mine, with no hope of escape. 
the end. Subscribe for more. Thank you.